So today we are going to be load testing the Bluetti EP800 here that you see behind me. Now this is an all-in-one system, basically inverter, battery, solar charge controllers, all in one making the install a breeze. So the EP800 is a great system for those of you looking to go 100% off grid and use this. The system I have here has three batteries total plus the inverter, which is a total of 15 kilowatt hours. It has a 7600 watt inverter up there that can run 7600 watts continuously. Now the way I use this EP800 is I have it hooked up to the home here. It runs the entire house, but it also has a grid connection that we use as backup in case the batteries get down to 20% and there is no sun out providing any solar power. So if you don't care about selling back to the grid, this is a perfect unit for you to use to lower your electric bill or try to get rid of it 100% completely and still have power if the grid goes down. Now I did a prior video that went into a lot of the specs on this thing and a general overview. So I'll leave a card at the end of this video you can click on to watch that video. But in a nutshell, this Bluetti EP800 can run 7,600 watts continuously. It is 240 volt split phase. So you can run all of your, ho your household appliances that you have off this unit. Now the setup I have here behind you is 15 kilowatt hours of batteries. Basically each of these batteries are about five kilowatt hours. I also have 4,550 watts of solar panels connected to this Blue Eddy EP800, but you can max this thing out at 9,000 watts at 500 volts. Now since the oven, the heater, the clothes dryer, the water heater are all on propane in this house, this house runs continuously anywhere from 500 to about 4,000 watts, depending on which appliances we're running at, at a certain time. And this EP800 could run 7,600 watts continuously. So as you can see, it can easily power the loads in this house. So here's a quick rundown of how the EP800 works. So you see the uh, solar panel wiring down here. Comes up into this box, converts to these uh, MC4, the solar panel wire, the MC4 connectors. We're only using one of the two charge controllers, as you can see there. So that's where the power comes in. And then this is the inverters portion up here. Here's where all your wiring is. So this is a grid. This is our grid backup connection that we can shut off just by pulling that and go completely off grid. And here is the power that comes out of the EP800, runs up to this conduit and into this critical loads panel. So we have all the loads to the house on this panel right here, which we pulled these loads off the main panel and moved them on the other side of the wall here into this. So the EP EPA 100 runs only this panel right here, which is 99% of the loads in this entire house. Here is a picture of the panel. You can see all the loads are basically missing, except for we have the uh, double pull 50 amp breaker here. That's what's sending the backup power over to the EP800. And then we have a couple breakers that are outside outlets that we just couldn't fit on the EP800 critical loads panel that you saw outside, but we can add another critical loads panel beneath that very easily to add those if we wanted to. And you can see how we wire nutted the original lines coming to those loads, wire nutted them, and then sent those wires out, the hot wires only, over to the critical loads panel along with the ground, but we left the neutrals in this main panel here just to make the install a lot easier. So I want to give an example here of how do you take this thing completely off grid that would basically this is going to act like the grid is shutting down since this is our grid backup connection, which we're not even running off the grid right now. The EP800 automatically, we have a program to just use solar and battery power if it's available. And so it's not using it right now, but I still want to signify like a grid outage. I turned on all the lights in the house. So you can see that exterior light right there on the right hand side of your screen. So you'll see that the, basically within 20 milliseconds, the EP800 can take over in the event of a grid outage. So your computers will all stay on. Anything you have running should stay running because of how fast it can flip. So here we go. Let's pull the, uh, to show you what it would be like if we lost power. And you'll see that light in the bottom from the right side of your screen there won't even turn off. So here we go. That's how fast this thing converts or can change over to the Blue Eddy power in the event of a grid outage. It's pretty impressive. So let's go start turning on some loads in the house so you can see this thing in action. All right, so here is a view of the Blue Eddy EP800 app that I have on my tablet here. And as you can see in the top left-hand corner right here, you see we're bringing in 3.3 kilowatts of solar power at the moment. The batteries are at 
and right now the house is consuming one kilowatt exactly. Now what that is, is I've turned on every single light in the entire house in this uh, 1800 square foot, three bedroom, two bath house. And I've also got four fridges running. Well, basically two freezers, full size freezers and two refrigerator slash uh, freezer combos. So that's what we have running on this house right now. And you can see the grid there, it shows zero. We are completely disconnected from the grid, but the way we have it set up, which is in self-consumption mode, uh, which means we are only using batteries and solar power. Unless the batteries get below 20% and there's not enough solar power, then it will go back to grid for as much power as it needs to make up the difference. And then the minute the sun comes back out and provides enough power, it goes right back to using the solar power only and turning off the grid. So that makes this thing very efficient, which allows you to lower your electricity bill as much as possible with this thing. All right, let's start turning on some loads and watching this thing go to work. So just turn the TV on. I'm going to turn on the forced air unit as well. So that has brought our consumption up to 1.8, 1.9 kilowatts right in that area. And the beautiful thing about this EP800 is it updates immediately. So you don't have like a two, three minute delay like a lot of other inverter software has. All right, let's turn on some more loads. Now let's turn on, let's turn on a 1500 watt space heater. All right, that thing is on. And that has now brought us to 3.1 kilowatts. Well, while I did mention um, the home is on propane, a propane stove, if you have free energy, might as well use it, right? So uh, we bought an induction cooktop to be able to cook while we have free power instead of wasting the propane. So let's start this thing up. Let's go to max sear, which is really going to push this thing. Start it up. All right, it is running. All right, now we are using 4.5, 4.8 kilowatts. So again, remember this Bluetti EP800 can run on 7,600 watts continuously. So we're pushing right around five kilowatts. And as of right now, I'm running a lot. I'm running heavy loads. Every light bulb in this house is on. The TV is on. There's also a laptop computer that's on right now. We've got the forced air unit running, which uses about 500, runs on about 500 watts. And we also have the induction cooktop, which is pushing right around 15, 1600 watts. Um, so we are running a pretty good load on this thing. So let's go ahead and start the dishwasher now. All right, I can hear the dishwasher running and didn't even move that much consumption there, 4.7, 4.8. So we're still just under five kilowatts. All right, I'm trying to think about what else to run here. I guess I can put another space heater on, just put another big load on it, 1500 more watts. Let's turn on another space heater. Now we're starting to push it. Now we're at six, a little over six kilowatts. And again, remember, I've got one, two, three, four, five different refrigerators slash freezers plugged into this thing. We've got two space heaters at 1500 watts each. We've got all the lights in the house, TV, computer, the dishwasher's running. I mean, we're putting, we're putting about as much as I can put on this house. I'm on this thing right now, and we're still under the limit by a little over a thousand watts, about 1400 watts. Well, we've got some new chicks here and we've got a heat lamp that I don't have on right now. So why don't I go ahead and plug that in? All right, that heating lamp's on. Let's see where that puts us. That puts us at 6.4 kilowatts. So we still have about a thousand watts we can run through this thing. Well, I could put on the washer, but I don't have a load ready and it's I already know it's going to run about 300 watts, so that would bring us to about 6,700. Okay, so I added every ceiling fan in the house, which is about three of them. I also added another 250-watt space heater, turned on another two TVs, and we're still at 6,700 watts. I saw it bump up to about 7,100 watts for a minute there as well. So we are pushing this thing really hard, and it is handling it like a champ. I can't even really think of anything else to put on this thing. Um, I guess I could start the coffee maker, but that would throw us over. I think it's going to be about 1100 Watts. So that would put us over the edge. So I don't want to do that, but yeah, this thing is, this thing has performed flawlessly. Now let's get into the financials of the system. As of right now, you can buy this exact system that I have here using my discount code for $11,400. 
That includes this exact setup with the inverter and three stackable batteries, totaling 15 kilowatt hours of battery storage. For the 9,000 watts of solar panels that you can put on this thing, that'd be about an extra $3,700. And for the ground mount ballasted solar panel racks that I use, you're looking at probably another $2,000 for that whole 9,000 watt array. Then there's miscellaneous items like wire, conduit, connectors, the critical loads panel, and that would probably add up to around another $2,000. So total materials for this system, if you had 9,000 watts of solar panels on it, would be about $19,100. And that's before the 30% tax credit that this does qualify for. So total out of pocket for you with the solar tax credit included would be about $13,370. Now that's if you do the installation yourself like I did. Now my estimate, at least in my area of Texas, if you had a professional install this system for you, including the solar panel racks, that would probably cost right around another $6,500 or so. Now that's just an estimate. Depending on where you're at in the United States, your cost could be different. And Blue Eddy can help connect you with a licensed installer in your area that is certified to install these. So with professional installation, this whole system would cost right around $25,600. And after the 30% tax credit, you take that into consideration, the total cost would be $17,920. Now it's hard to give an exact payback period uh, for this unit because electricity rates vary so wildly across the United States, uh, but I'll do my best to try to make it simple. Now the average home in the US uses about 20 to 40 kilowatt hours of electricity per day. And if you had a 9,000 watt solar array on this unit and you had a decent amount of sun, say five hours, four or five hours a day of solar exposure, you should be able to replace about 85% of your electric bill without an issue. And I say 85% because it can probably provide all the power you need, but there's gonna be storms, rainy days, things like that, where you're gonna to have to go to your backup, which is for me is the grid, for you it could be a generator. So you will need some sort of backup and that is only prudent if you're doing an off-grid type system. So that means you could take 85% off your electric bill. Let's say your average electric bill was $200 a month. Now in California, it's gonna be a lot more than that. Uh, that's it around here in Texas, where our electricity rates are a lot lower than say New York or California. But if you take 85% off a $200 a month electric bill, you're looking at saving about $170 a month or $2,040 per year. Now, if you do the install yourself on this, as I mentioned earlier, you're looking at about a cost of $13,370. And that's after you take into consideration that 30% federal tax credit. So you take that $13,370 and divide that by what you're gonna save annually, which as I mentioned, 85% of $200 a month electric bill is about 170 a month. Now that comes out to 2,040 a year. So take that $13,370 that you paid for the system, divide that by 2,040 per year, and that comes out to a 6.55 year payback period. So basically the system's gonna pay for itself in 6.55 years, and everything after that is gravy. Now this system is warrantied for 10 years and still have 80% of its battery capacity left in it. So this system should last well past that warranty period. Now, if you have a professional install your system, as I mentioned earlier, after the federal tax credit, you're looking at about $17,920. So now divide that by the $2,040 you're gonna save per year, and that comes out to an 8.78 year payback period. Now, again, that's not counting inflation. So that's if your electric bill stays the same for the next eight years, which we all know it's not going to. So that should probably bring you down another one or two years on that payback period. So while this system is expensive, it should pay for itself for sure financially for you well before it's at the end of its life. Now, can you really put a price though on having power when the grid goes down or when electricity rates skyrocket and you really have to be conservative in, on what you use in your house? I don't know, I don't think you can. So for me, that was my main motivator to put my system in. And I'll have a link in the description of where you can purchase the EP800 and the EP900 and use my discount code for each of those if you wanna pick it up and save about $600. Now the EP800 is a modular all-in-one system. It's basically plug and play. So each of these batteries just kind of snap right on top of each other, plug right in without doing crimping of any cables. The inverter sits right on top of it. It's very simple to install. The hardest part is that critical loads panel that you see over my shoulder here that you would need an electrician, or if you have electrical experience, you could probably do it. But this install is extremely easy. Now I mentioned this system is expensive, now, could you put together kind of an inverter, buy charge controllers, cheaper batteries and fuses and mix them together and build your own system cheaper? Yes, you absolutely could. Now you're gonna have to make the call if it's worth it to have this easy plug and play system that's just one bang and you're done with the install. 
Now I have a free PDF that you can download that's basically a schematic of my entire install, this Blue Eddy EP800, showing the wiring schematic, all the equipment I used, down to the conduit, wire size, everything you need to install this thing. You can download that at ep800download.com. And all the numbers I used based on my estimates on the solar panel costs, the racking costs, all that equipment is in that PDF that you can see where to buy those at. Now, overall, the EP800 is a solid choice for those of you looking to do an off-grid cabin or use it like I do to lower your electric bill, have power regardless of what happens to the grid. This is an excellent choice. Now, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, as I will be releasing more videos in the future on this EP800. See you in the next video. Thanks, everyone.